Hey guys, Lego Masa 99 here again today, and today I am here to finally show you guys, after over two years, my brand new Redstone computer. Now, I have been hinting this all over the place for the longest time, and I know it's literally taken forever for me to get this out to you guys, but I am finally doing it. It is finally finished, and I am excited to show you guys what this new computer can do. Hopefully you guys liked that little montage that I put together. Um, showing some of the Redstone Computer version 5.0's components and we will see all of those and I will explain it and show it off in a quick minute. Alright, so you guys might be wondering, you know, it's been over two years, what have you been doing with this computer? What has changed? Has anything gotten better? Those kinds of questions and the answer is yes to all of them. Actually, is it yes to all of them? Well, regardless, this computer is better in every single way and yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the major differences with this computer architecturally and with the design philosophy and all that stuff compared to the Redstone Computer 4.0. All right, so one of the first major big differences with this computer compared to the Redstone Computer 4.0 and my other Redstone computers is that um, I've tried to compact it and make this computer as small as possible while adding as many features as possible and making it as fast as possible. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the computer. So I've shown you guys, or you guys have seen the user input panel here, and we will talk more about that in a few minutes. But let's just go ahead and get a little overview here. So this is the entire computer, if I back out here a little bit. So here it is, <clears throat> the Redstone Computer 5.0. And you guys might notice that it is a little bit smaller than the Redstone Computer 4.0, if you're looking at it from the surface. There's always that little butt there. So if we go ahead and drop down, into these, into the spaghetti of wiring here, <clears throat> you will see that it is a lot more compact. And there is a lot more going on here um, and then compared to the Redstone Computer 4.0. Since when I was developing this computer, um, when I started developing it a couple years ago, uh, it's one of the things that I saw that the Redstone Computer 4.0 was very flat and it was very it, was, it took up a lot of area, but it didn't really use that area very wisely. So um, I tried to address that here, and I think I have done a pretty good job at it because there is a lot less space in here, and everything is more compact, which means you will have faster performance, which you guys will see, and a lot of other architectural benefits as well. The Redstone Computer version 5.0 is remarkably similar to its older brother, the Redstone Computer 4.0, while changing up a lot of things and adding a lot more features. Um, this computer is still 8-bit. All of my Redstone computers so far have been 8-bit. Um, and this is a quad-core computer, um, just like all my other Redstone computers that I have shown on this channel. So we have... We can see one core here, another one here, and then three, and then four. And these are the massive program memory blocks. All right, so the next thing that has changed dramatically with the Redstone Computer 5.0 compared to the Redstone Computer 4.0 is the layout of the multi-core structure and how those cores interact with each other. In the Redstone Computer 4.0 world, with each core, while you still had a lot of freedom with those cores and what you could do with them, they were still sort of locked down in a way. Um, the speed of all of the cores was connected to the user input panel on the Redstone Computer 4.0, so that meant all cores had only one, um, they shared the exact same speed, and you could, you could not control whether the cores were on or off at certain times in the program, or whether they were executing code or not. You had to turn on the core at the beginning of the program for it to execute, and then you'd potentially waste cycles if you were using multiple cores in your program but that has completely changed with the Redstone Computer 5.0. The cores of this computer are designed to be a lot more independent compared to its older brothers, the Redstone Computer 3.0 and 4.0, because each one of these cores now can set their own speed independent of all the other cores, and it can also turn on and off other cores from that core. So then that means that you don't have to be running cores unnecessarily. You can start them when you need to and then stop their execution when it is necessary as well to ensure smoother and more efficient performance. Now the program memory on this computer has also been vastly improved compared to the previous Redstone computers I've created. This, com uh, this computer specifically, each core has double the amount of program memory compared to the Redstone computer 4.0, whereas the Redstone computer 4.0 had 63 lines of code with an 84-bit instruction word per line of code. Now the Redstone Computer 5.0, this version, has 128 lines of code 
as you can see right here, this huge block. This is 128 lines of code with about 48 bits per instruction word. The instruction set for this computer has also been vastly trimmed down and reduced compared to previous generations of these Redstone computers, which means programs will be able to run a lot more efficiently. And with all of my Redstone computers that I've developed thus far, um, this instruction set is compatible with the Arcus language specification that I have developed um, in the past year or so. And it is also compatible with the DRC HLLC compiler project, which means that you can write programs in Arcus and then compile them for this computer and upload it to this computer so that you can run programs on here. This computer also has an enhanced suite of I.O. compared to my previous Redstone computers. And as you can see here, we have a, a display right here. This is a 15 by 15 resolution display, so a total of 225 pixels that we can draw on this display. We have a decimal display here. We have a raw binary display here. And this computer also contains a data port, just like the Redstone computer 4.0 and 3.0, but instead of it being parallel, it is now serialized for uh, much more efficient data communication and data transfer. So we have our serial input port here where you can send in serialized data. And then over here we have our serial output port where you can, uh, I guess, export, send, transfer serialized data to um, external peripherals and components that you can hook up to this computer. And this version also has a much more efficient random number generator, which is right here, used to generate random numbers for programs. and um, this is a new addition to the Redstone computer version 5.0. We have a 31 byte stack, which is in the back right here. Now, this is um, a unique type of stack as, as this is a hardware stack and people familiar with computer science will know that you can't really have a, a quote unquote hardware stack. Um, it's just a data model within RAM, but I have included here 31 bytes of a hardware stack so you can push data onto it and then you can pop data back out. While on the topic of memory, um, we also have 31 bytes here of dual read enhanced RAM. Um, I'm going to call it ERAM. And the reason why I call it ERAM is because, or compared to regular RAM, is because as you can see here it's a lot more square. So if we see here it's this, so we have the RAM modules in the middle here. We have four RAM modules, I'll just call them RAM modules. They're dual read just like the Redstone computer 3.0 and 4.0 but it has been designed in such a way as to where the um, the data differential is minimal so the access times to read any byte of data in this array is uh, essentially the same compared to the Redstone computer 4.0 and 3.0 where the RAM was super long and if you were trying to read information at the very end of the RAM it would take a lot longer for the data to travel around the computer so with the stack and the enhanced RAM combined, you have 62 bytes of available addresses that you can address to. These ones you can address randomly, <clears throat> and these addresses here you have to push and pop, which means you can't access them randomly. Each core on this computer also has 8 bytes of dual read cache, and this is extremely helpful in speeding up programs and making them more efficient because as we can see, here is the cache and the ALU is right over here. It's this orange um, circuit right here, or multiple circuits, but it's this orange region over here. And the proximity of the cache to the ALU here for processing makes it so much faster um, compared to using regular RAM because when you want to read an address from RAM, you have to go through the master output bus, which is this huge white bus here. Let me see if I can get a better picture of it. Let's go over here. So here is the master output bus in white. And this bus connects all of the components of the computer together. Now, this design model has been used in previous computers that I have designed. But it takes a lot longer to retrieve data from RAM compared to the cache. And that means that it is very recommended to use the cache to speed up programs. And this computer also implements a new register-based data model for accessing internal peripherals and components, which enables us to do things such as updating the speed per core, since there is a dedicated speed register on each core that you can write values to to update the speed, as well as, um, I call it the go-to register, the line of code register, but it is more formally known as the program counter register, um, the PCR. And um, each one of these cores has a program counter register, <clears throat> and you can write specific values from the program into that register to change the line of code that the program is on. Now, you did not have this level of granularity and flexibility with 
previous Redstone computers, but this new register model has made that possible. Now, moving on to the GPU here, the plotter, um, this is based on the same design as the previous Redstone computer 4.0 here. We have a 15 by 15 screen here, which gives us a total real estate of 225 pixels on this screen. And we have the same VRAM model right here as the Redstone computer 4.0. But um, and it also has the same function such as drawing points, erasing points, um, and the granular system, which I will explain in a quick minute. But I have also vastly optimized this GPU or the plotter compared to the Redstone computer 4.0. This GPU also supports the GPU granular system that is seen in the Redstone computer 4.0, which basically allows you to send huge amounts of screen data to this screen at once to allow updating of massive parts of the screen compared to drawing um, individual pixels to create an image. And you, we will see that in a moment with some of the demo programs that I'm gonna show you guys. All right, so let's talk about this user input panel here for a little bit. So this control center here essentially is all you need to execute programs and to send data into programs and to control any sort of program from here without doing extensive debugging. And we have all of the same components from previous Redstone computers. So over here we have the computer power controls. We have our on, sleep, and off. And essentially this just turns on the computer and starts up cores that are enabled. And this will put those cores to sleep, basically stop the um, cores from updating their program counter registers and stop the clock from updating them. And then the off signal will shut off all the cores, reset the RAM, reset all the internal registers, and that sort of thing. Now over here we have the speed control system and this is a little different com um, compared to previous generations of the of my Redstone computers. So we do have the same three bit speed code here, I'm gonna call it a speed code. And what you can do is that you um, enter in the speed code in binary and then you press this update speed register button. And that will write this speed code to um, the speed register on whichever cores you have enabled. Over here we have the core um, toggling space here and essentially this is where you can toggle which cores that will start at the beginning of the program and we, got, we will see that in a minute and then we also have our toggling the random number generator here as well. Here we have some computer inputs that you can send into the computer and the computer can check basically hey did the user acknowledge this input, did the user do this, did the user do that, you can do that through this section here. Now this here simply is an 8-bit panel to enter in any sort of data that a program might need, whether it be a number or an encoded coordinate or encoded data or anything like that, it can be entered in right here. Now these are the various program status indicators. So here we have eight programmable indicators that programs can use to tell the user of certain things. And then we have a carry out indicator here to Basically, this will turn on whenever any ALU has their carry out signal or their carry flag set in the status register of each core. And then here we have a stack overflow indicator, and that basically tells the, um, pr the computer and the user if the 31 byte stack that is behind this screen here is full. And over here we have some reset options. This is pretty self explanatory. This will clear the RAM and stack on shutdown. These are just simple T flip-flops here that we can toggle and then this will clear all of the displays so when we mean displays we're talking about everything on this um, huge panel here and then you can reset each one of those displays individually up at the top here we have some of the um, core status indicators over here so we have actually the core status indicators and this these will tell you which cores are currently active and then are currently executing code and then each um, one of these here basically will tell you which line of code each core is on if that core is on. So if it's off, it'll just look like this. But then if it's on, you will see in binary what line of code the that core is on. So then we have core one info over here, core two, core three, and core four. This computer also has a much more uh, utilitarian style of a debug center here. So I'll show you guys that. So let's go ahead and go to the core one debug center. And as you can see here, we are teleported to this massive wiring in the middle of core one. And we are surrounded by all of these signs and switches here. And um, yeah, so you can use this to manually step through your programs to debug to see what's going on with the computer and that kind of thing. And yeah, this debug center is extremely useful when debugging your programs as you can fly around um, all of the components around here as you can see and make sure that each one of them is working and you're able to diagnose problems and fix them and I have used this substantially to fix 
quite a few issues that I've had when I was building this computer. So it is pretty useful. All right, now that I have talked about the specifications of this computer and the new things about it and what's changed, let's go ahead and see some demo programs. All right, so the first demo program I have to show you guys is the classic Fibonacci program here. And I'm gonna show you guys how to load it and run it on this world. And I will leave this world in the download of this video so that you guys can play around with it just like I have with all my other rest of the computers. So to load a program in, you see here we have the Fibonacci program and it looks like that this is running on core one. So we need to enable core one and we do that by pressing the toggle core one button. So then as you can see, now this light is on and these um, numbers here are, is the binary value for the speed code for this program that the program can run at. And it, um, the Fibonacci program can actually run at the computer's fastest default speed, which is 30 ticks, which is unheard of. If you guys um, have followed my other Redstone computers, these programs have had to run at much slower speeds conventionally. And now they are, they are able to run at much faster speeds. And to basically set the speed, what we do is that since, once we have this core enabled, we just set the these value, this um, the speed code here to match whatever's on the sign, and it's 000. zero, zero. And then we click the update speed register button. And then if we've done it right, we will get a little message here that says the core one speed has been updated. Now that this value has been written to core one's speed register and that core will run, will run at 30 ticks. So now that we have loaded the program in, we have set the core and we have set the speed, let's go ahead and run the program. And we just do that by pressing the on button. <clears throat> and you guys will be amazed at just how fast this program runs and now this is in real time um, I'm not speeding this part up or anything but I will show benchmarks a little later compared to other computers but if we wait just a little bit we can see it's um, updating really quickly and we already have our first value here of the Fibonacci sequence which is one you will know that um, if you've watched my other Reds to computer videos my other showcase videos this is pres um, unprecedented speed this is extremely fast and I've um, there's a lot of things that have gone into making this computer a lot more optimized and a lot more efficient to allow this sort of program runtime behavior so as you can see we already are on the third number of the Fibonacci sequence and my computer is starting to slow down a little bit it's not lagging necessarily because I still have well over 60 FPS but it's starting to slow down just a little bit because of the efficiency and speed of this computer and the core that it's running on. All right, so here is a benchmark of the Fibonacci program running on the Redstone computer 5.0 at the top and the Redstone computer 4.0 at the bottom. Now, this program has been heavily optimized for both of these computers and the Redstone computer 4.0 has received some updates since its initial launch two years ago. So these programs are running pretty quickly. And we can see here that the Fibonacci program for the Redstone computer 5.0 finished with two minutes and 54 seconds and the Redstone computer 4.0 finishes with a time of 4 minutes and 8 seconds. Alright, so the next program that I have to show you guys is the classic multiplication program. And I have already loaded this into our um, program settings here. So we have it set to 60 ticks, which is the speed code um, value 011. And I have it set right here. And we have core 2 enabled. Now, the multiplication program, when it starts up, it will ask for two numbers through our user input system here. And this program multiplies two numbers by doing repeated addition, which I know is a very rudimentary algorithm to calculate multiplied numbers, but for the purpose of this video, it should suit us just fine. All right, so if we start this program here and we go ahead and look at our um, settings here, we can see that core two has been turned on with our core status indicator, as we can see here. And then we're getting some messages in the chat here with um, the core two starting the clock. And now we can see um, the line of code being updated here and now as you can see the um, This first indicator will turn on and you will see that it will start blinking and basically this is the program telling us that we need to input our first number So for this demo, we're just going to do seven times seven, which is the classic uh, Multiplication or the, the classic numbers that we use to multiply So to do that we just enter seven here in binary and then we press the computer input one button and what this will do is that once we press this button, the computer will check if we've pressed this button. And if we have, which we have here, then it will load this number that we've input here into the program as the first number to multiply. And now that we've done that, um, the computer will do, some um, will do some initialization with this number. And now we can see here that another second indicator has turned on and you will also see that it will start blinking as well. 
and this is the program telling us to enter in a second number to multiply, so the second number. And we're also going to use 7 since we want to do 7 times 7. So now we just need to press the computer input 2 button. And what this will do is that the computer will realize or check that we have um, submitted the second number to multiply and then it will read this number in and it will multiply 7 times 7 doing repeated addition. All right, so here we have a benchmark of the multiplication program running on the Red computer 5.0 on the top and 4.0 on the bottom. And just like the Fibonacci program, um, the, this program is heavily optimized for both of these computers. Now, this does take a little bit longer because there's a little more computation going on, or rather there's, yeah, there's a bigger volume of computations going on compared to the Fibonacci sequence. But as we can see here, the Red Stick Computer 5.0 finishes with a time of 6 minutes and 5 seconds. And then the Red Stick Computer version 4.0 comes in with a time of 7 minutes and 36 seconds, which shows the speed of the Redstone Computer version 5.0. Now, the third program that I have to show you guys is the Smiley Face program. And this program actually is a tribute back to my very first Redstone Computer that I made um, about four years ago now, I think. Around four years ago. And <clears throat> yeah, it's a little tribute to that. And... To um, prepare this program, we're going to go ahead and toggle core 3, and then we're going to write the speed 010, so 50 ticks, into our speed system here, <clears throat> and then update core 3's speed register. And as we can see, we have <clears throat> core 3 speed updated. Send that again. And now, essentially, what this program will do is that if we have this button pressed here, it will draw a smiley face, and then if it's not pressed, it will draw a sad face. So let's go ahead and see the sad face first. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this button here unpressed, and if we turn on the computer here, um, we will not see anything for a little bit because it's doing some initialization checks and that kind of thing. But in a few seconds here, we will see the computer start to draw something on the screen here. And there we go, now we have our first GPU draw command, as you can see on the um, output there. And now we have another GPU draw command, and as you can see we have two pixels that have been drawn on the screen. And this is using the GPU pixel mode. It's drawing individual points, and we have um, four pixels on the screen now. And now, the um, this program uh, utilizes the GPU granular system, so we will see what it will do in a little bit and it's sending over lots of GPU data right now so it's taking um, it takes several clock cycles to send all of that data over and now that we have our final GPU draw command and we lag a little bit but as you can see the GPU granular system has drawn an entire line right here and then the core shuts off and the computer shuts off because that's what the program um, does but um, as you can see here, the GPU granular system can draw lines, it can draw all sorts of stuff on here. And <clears throat> if you've seen the Red Stick Computer 4.0 video, it can update basically the entire screen in one singular GPU granular update instruction, which is pretty incredible. All right, now that we have seen the sad face here, let's go ahead and clear the screen and show the happy face. So actually, I think this program clears the screen by itself. So let's go ahead and set this input. So now it's on. And now if we start the program again, the screen should be cleared. And then we will see something else on the screen instead of a sad face. So as you can see, the GPU has been cleared. And it also can do that in a singular instruction instead of erasing every single pixel on there. So that's very useful. And then it does a couple of checks, checks to see if this button was pressed, and as you can see, it checked that. And now we are starting to get some action on the screen again. So we have our two little eyes here, and then it will draw the bottom half of the of the face. I'm not going to say what face it is because I want you guys to see, but I'm pretty sure you guys already know what kind of face it's going to be. Now the program is sending over the GPU granular data, and with this computer, it takes four clock cycles to send over a full 30-bit GPU granular, or to send over all of the data needed for a GPU granular instruction, which is 30 bits, compared to just one instruction on the Redstone Computer 4.0. But as you can see, now it drew a smiley face. So it drew that same line, but just one row lower. <clears throat> and it has done that very quickly. Now, this would have taken a lot longer if the 
plotter had to draw each pixel one by one all the way across but we have the GPU granular system for that, so that is not necessary, and we have our smiley face. Now, the final showcase program that I wanna show you guys is, um, I call it a random drawing program, and it's not a random drawing program, but essentially what it does is that it draws um, randomly generated pixels on the screen, and it draws 16 pixels, I am pretty sure. So let's go ahead and see that. All right, so I have gone ahead and set the program settings for our random drawing program. I have cleared the screen and we are all set to go. Now, one thing I will note though, is that with the random drawing program, you need the random number generator to be toggled on or else you will not have random points generated on the screen. You'll just have one point and you won't see anything else on there. So now that we have the random number generator on and the um, random drawing program core enabled, let's go ahead and start our program here. So now all we need to do is press the computer on button and we will wait a little bit. So this program uses the random number generator like I explained to generate random pixels to be drawn onto the screen here. And um, it does this by, or the, the number that it generates is actually an encoded coordinate and these encoded coordinates are then just updated or put on the display as pixels. And we will see that very shortly. All right, so there is our first GPU draw command. As you can see right here, we have GPU draw and a pixel has appeared on the display. Now this was a completely randomly generated pixel and the program will do this 15 more times and then it will shut off. All right, so there is our second GPU draw command. And as you can see, we now have a completely different random pixel on the screen. And this will basically happen with, um, this will happen 14 more times and then the program will shut off and we will have a finished random assortment of dots on our screen. All right, so as we can see here, the program has finished running, the computer has shut off, and all of the cores have been reset. And as you can see here, we have some random points on the screen. And optimally, there would be 16 random points, but sometimes there may not be 16 points because sometimes the random number generator generates the same number, and then the same pixel is um, drawn based on that number. So some of these pixels are actually duplicates, but you can't really see it. So. Um, it drew 16 times, but there may not be 16 unique pixels on this display. And yeah, guys, that is basically it. Those are all of the demo programs that I have for you guys today. And now this computer is capable of so much more. And I will hopefully be releasing new videos showcasing the potential of this computer, taking full advantage of it. Before I wrap this video up, I just wanted to give a huge, 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 huge thank you to all of you guys for all of the support and all of the encouragement, all of the comments. I read all of you guys' comments, actually, um, and I reply to a lot of them, but I just want to thank you guys so much for all of the support. The growth, the channel growth this year has been absolutely ridiculous. I haven't, I did not imagine um, my, my channel to be, to have like 12,000 subscribers right now. That's insane. So I didn't even think that I'd reach, you know, 1,000, much less 12. So um, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support and um, please give me suggestions, give me ideas, comments, anything. It's greatly appreciated. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank you guys so much for everything this year. And yeah, I really appreciate it. It's been an insane journey. <laughs> With that, um, thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys in the next video, which is hopefully coming soon. And yeah, thank you guys so much once again.
And yeah, bye-bye.